God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Outreach Ministry. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr. being used by God as the apostle, the teacher, and the prophet over this ministry, the Word of God through Jesus Christ. I'd like to ask you to join with us today for a very informative and powerful show. Please bring pens, uh, some paper to take notes, and your Bible so you can follow along with me in Scripture. And this might be one of the shows where I have one of my friends with me that are also in the Gospel. This ministry networks with a lot of ministers, and the Lord uses this ministry to even give ministers a chance that no one else would give a chance to. So today is going to be a very powerful show. I don't know what God is going to do today, but we are going to find out. The ministry's website is right here, so that way you can go on the website and you can check it out and you can feel yourself around and, and, and look, look on the different features of the ministry's website. Don't forget to sign the guest book and just enjoy yourself. We love you. This ministry loves you so much. And the ministry's phone number is 475-300-3850, 24 hours. You can call for prayer, Bible questions, or whatever. But in the meantime, let's go back here and get into the Word and see what the Holy Ghost would have us to study. You see all these books behind me? Come on, let's go. Let's go into the library. And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God bless you, saints. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of God through Jesus Christ. Street and Irish Telecast. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr. And I'd like to ask you to grab your Bibles. Let's quickly get into this. 
and turn your Bibles to Numbers chapter 14. While you're doing that, I'm going to pray over the lesson. I'm going to pray over you. I'm going to pray over this broadcast because we really got to get into this. This is very powerful. Father, in Jesus' name, forgive us for all of our sins and shortcomings and our faults and our wrongs. Thank you for gathering us together. Thank you for handpicking us and putting us before you. Thank you for choosing to minister to us to reveal your will, your word, your way unto us. We thank you, O oh God. Thank you. Thank you that you're not leaving us in the dark. Thank you, O oh Lord, that you are addressing our issues, our concerns. And I ask, Lord, that you feed everybody watching, whether by television or by social media or by YouTube or any other way, even if they're just listening by audio CD or audio cassette, Please, Father, please minister to us in Jesus' name. Allow me to decrease that you may increase. Satan, we rebuke you and we plead the blood against you in Jesus' name. And Father, fill me with the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Give me a spiritual understanding of your word, yet you do the teaching. Again, allow me to decrease that you may increase. And thank you for the technology. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Again, I'd like to ask you to turn your Bibles to Numbers chapter 4. 14, I mean. Numbers chapter 14 and... For those that don't have a Bible, that are just standing around, praise God, just allow the Lord to minister to you. This is going to be a very powerful lesson because we have to uh, deal with the time where we are right now and what it is that we're all going through. Um, we're still in the series. Well, we're actually in a few series, but right now the Lord is using me to deal with uh, the depth of the biblical method of prayer and this is volume three okay and i'll tell you the title and everything afterwards it's going to be very powerful i'm telling you it's going to feed you it's going to minister to you and it's going to encourage you and it's for us that are up late night listening to god or reading or studying or praying or spending time with god and uh, you know just let god uh, minister to you. I'm going to be reading out of the Living Bible and out of the King James Version, okay? So, I'm going to read out of the King James Version first, as the Lord lead me, and then I'm going to go into the Living Bible. And there's a reason for it, because of clarity. It's important you understand this. This is a very powerful, very powerful word, all right? Uh, in the King James Version, it reads on this wise. Numbers chapter 14, starting at verse 1, and we're going to read the whole chapter. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, would God that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would God we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword that our lives, excuse me, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain, and let us return into Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Jeph Jephune, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. 
if the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have shewed among them, I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. And Moses said unto the Lord, Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou broughtest up this people in thy might from among them. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land, for they have heard that the Lord, excuse me, for they have heard that thou, Lord, art among this people, that thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of a cloud and in a pillar of fire by night. Now if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he sware unto them, therefore he hath slain them in the wilderness. And now I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people, according unto the greatness of thy mercy. And as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoked me see it, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and hath followed me fully. Thank you, Lord. Him will I bring into the land where into he went and his seed shall possess it. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron saying, how long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me, doubtless ye shall not come into the land, concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. 
but your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, then will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which ye search the land, even forty days, each day for a year shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. I, the Lord, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. And the men which Moses sent to search the land, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land, even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of the men that went to search the land, liveth still. And Moses told these sayings unto all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. And they rose up early in the morning and got them up into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here, and will go up unto the place which the Lord hath promised, for we have sinned. And Moses said, Wherefore now do ye transgress the commandment of the Lord? But it shall not prosper. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you, that ye be not smitten before your enemies. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and ye shall fall by the sword, because ye are turned away from the Lord. Therefore the Lord will not be with you. But they presumed to go up into the Excuse, excuse me, verse 44, but they presumed to go up unto the hilltop. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses <laughs> departed not out of the camp. Glory to God. Then the Amalekites came down and the Canaanites which dwelt in that hill and smote them and discomforted them even unto Hormah. I'll read it out of the Living Bible now. And then we're going to tackle some stuff. The King James, a lot of us understand that. But then there's some among us that don't. But the Living Bible is in plain English. And many will understand the Living Bible. Come closer, brother. Many will understand the Living Bible. Numbers chapter 14, again I'm starting at verse 1, and this is the Living Bible. Then all the people began weeping aloud, and they carried on all night. Their voices rose in a great chorus of complaint against Moses and Aaron. We wish we had died in Egypt, they wailed or even here in the wilderness, rather than be taken into this country ahead of us. Jehovah will kill us there, and our wives and little ones will become slaves. Let us get out of here and return to Egypt. The idea swept the camp. Let's elect a leader to take us back to Egypt, they shouted. Then Moses and Aaron fell face downward on the ground before the people of Israel. Two of the spies, Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, ripped their clothing and said to all the people, It is a wonderful country ahead, and the Lord loves us. He will bring us safely into the land and give it to us. It is very fertile, a land flowing with milk and honey. Oh, do not rebel against the Lord, and do not fear the people of the land, for they are but bread for us to eat. The Lord is with us, and he has removed his protection from them. Don't be afraid of them. But the only response of the people was to talk of stoning them. Then the glory of the Lord appeared. <laughs> and the Lord said to Moses, 
How long will these people despise me? Will they never believe me? Even after all the miracles I have done among them, I will disinherit them and destroy them with a plague, and I will make you into a nation far greater and mightier than they are. But what will the Egyptians think when they hear about it? Moses pleaded with the Lord. They know full well the power you displayed in rescuing your people. They have told this to the inhabitants of this land who are well aware that you are with Israel and that you talk with her face to face. They see the pillar of cloud and fire standing above us, and they know that you lead and protect us day and night. Now, if you kill all your people, the nations that have heard your fame will say the Lord had to kill them because he wasn't able to take them into the wilderness. He wasn't strong enough to bring them into the land he swore he would give them. Oh, please. Show the great power of your patience by forgiving our sins and showing us your steadfast love. Forgive us. Even though you have fought, excuse me, even though you have said that you don't let sin go unpunished and that you punish the father's fault and the children to the third and fourth generation. Oh, I plead with you. Pardon the sins of this people because of your magnificent, steadfast love. Just as you have forgiven them all the time from when we left Egypt until now. Then the Lord said, all right, I will pardon them as you have requested. But I vow by my own name that just as it is true that all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, so it is true that not one of the men who has seen my glory and the miracles I did both in Egypt and in the wilderness and ten times refused to trust me and obey me shall even see the land I promised to this people's ancestors. But my servant Caleb is a different kind of man. He has obeyed me fully. I will bring him into the land he entered as a spy, and his descendants shall have their full share in it. But now, since the people of Israel are so afraid of the Amalekites and the Canaanites living in the valleys, tomorrow you must turn back into the wilderness in the direction of the Red Sea. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, and to Aaron, excuse me, how long will this wicked nation complain about me? For I have heard all that they have been saying. Tell them the Lord vows to do to you what you feared. You will all die here in this wilderness. Not a single one of you, 20 years old and older, who has complained against me shall enter the promised land. Only Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun, are permitted to enter it. You said your children will become slaves of the people of the land. Well, instead, I will bring them safely into the land, and they shall inherit what you have despised. But as for you, your dead bodies shall fall in this wilderness. You must wander in the desert like nomads for 40 years. In this way, you will pay for your faithlessness until the last of you lies dead in the desert. Since the spies were in the land for 40 days, you must wander in the wilderness for 40 years, a year for each day, bearing the burden of your sins. I will teach you what it means to reject me. I, Jehovah, have spoken. Every one of you who has conspired against me shall die here in this wilderness. Then the 10 spies who had incited the rebellion against Jehovah by striking fear into the hearts of the people were struck dead before the Lord. Of all the spies, only Joshua and Caleb remained alive. What sorrow there was throughout the camp when Moses reported God's words to the people. They were up early the next morning and started towards the promised land. Here we are, they said. We realize that we have sinned, but now we are ready to go into the land the Lord has promised us. But Moses said, it is too late. Now you are disobeying the Lord's orders to return to the wilderness. 
Don't go ahead with your plan or you will be crushed by your enemies, for the Lord is not with you. Don't you remember? The Amalekites and the Canaanites are there. You have deserted the Lord, and now he will desert you. But they went ahead into the hill country, despite the fact that neither the ark nor Moses left the camp. Then the Amalekites and the Canaanites who lived in the hills came down and attacked them and chased them to Hormah. Now, I'm led to read <laughs> one more verse of something and then we're going to get into <sighs> this word. And we're going to walk from the living Bible as the Lord has said. That's what we're going to do. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 1 says this book records Moses' address to the people of Israel when they were camped in the valley of the Arabah in the wilderness of Moab, east of the Jordan River. Cities in the area included Suf, Paran, Tophel, Laban, Hazaroth, and Dizahab. I actually pronounced Dizahab. The speech was given on February 15th, 40 years after the people of Israel left Mount Horeb. Though it takes only 11 days to travel by foot from Mount Horeb to Kadesh Barnea, going by way of Mount Seir. At the time of this address, King Sihon of the Amorites had already been defeated at Heshbon, and King Og of Bashan had been defeated at Ashtaroth, near Edrei. Here, then, is Moses' address to Israel, stating all the laws. God had commanded him to pass on to them. <sighs> Father, in Jesus' name, we ask you to forgive us for our sins again. And Lord, we ask that you just talk to us, that you minister to us, that you reveal your truth, your will, your way, and your word unto us those that you have sitting around or standing around or laying around allow them father to hear your word allow us all to hear your word and to be encouraged by your word in jesus name answer questions reveal things expose demons but just help us to understand what thou sayest. That you should get all the glory. Prepare us. And I'm asking that you put your word in my mouth. Fill me with the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and give me a spiritual understanding of your holy word. I thought I had some oil on this podium, but it's behind me. I can't reach it. But Lord, I thank you. <laughs> okay, my point of contact is my faith. I thank you. And we rebuke the devil and we plead the blood against him in Jesus' name. And now, Father, you do the talking. Allow me to decrease. I must decrease that you may increase. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray. Amen. The thought that God gave me, again, for this talk, is called the depth of the biblical method of prayer. And this is volume three, volume three. The title is, it's two titles, they're connected. One title is called The Family Meeting. All of us are family, God's people. Nine times out of 10, no one unsaved, well, 
the people unsaved and carnal may be watching this broadcast, but no one who wants to walk with Satan and stay with him is going to watch this broadcast. And if they started, they're not going to be able to continue because of the content that God is going to put forth. But all of us are God's family. We're of the household of faith. So the title is the family meeting. Come, let's gather and let's sit before the Lord. And let's hear him, let's listen to him. Let's come before him boldly and let's approach his throne and let's sit down or stand up or lay down or lean back. However God leads you, lay prostrate, however he leads you, because we need to seek God. We need to look toward heaven for direction and instruction. We need to consult God for his strategy about the time that we're in right now. This is such a serious time. The other title is called the Joshua generation. When studying the character of God. There's many things about God that you will find that will be contrary to what many are saying about him. One of the truths of the matter is that God doesn't play. And yet there are so many who profess to follow him without asking for his strategy. There's so many that profess to be a child of his while not bearing holy fruit. There's so many even in the pulpit wearing a collar who claim that God has sent them forth but they cometh not with words of correction and warning. They don't come with words of encouragement or instruction for training in righteousness. Yet instead, they come with the report that God is Santa Claus when he's not. They on Sunday, a lot of people will put on their Sunday face and go to a service and call themselves worshiping God and entertaining and auditioning and performing. There's people that think a thing and spread false doctrine not even aware that the doctrine they're spreading is false. And God is vexed. He's vexed because he cares about his sheep. He cares about his children. He cares about his family. And he cares about what they are being fed. It's time brothers and sisters in the pulpit that if you're not going to say what thus saith the Lord and line up with this, if your message is not going to come from here and say the same thing that this says, it is time to get out the pulpit before you get carried out. Saith the Lord. It's time to get out of ministry. It's time to step away from the podium. It's time to take off the collar. Unless you are going to capitulate to the commandments 
and the will and the statutes and the methods of God. No one with many degrees impresses God because he is the epitome of wisdom. No, you don't understand. He is wisdom. He is wisdom. The word for wisdom in scripture is Sophia. He is wisdom. He already said the way he do things is not the way we would do it. He also said that his thoughts are not our thoughts. As high as the heaven are from the earth, so are his ways. Some don't believe it. Isaiah 55, verse 11. I dare not step outside of the word. So uh, verse 10, well, let's go to verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, which means it, don't, it doesn't go back up. As it comes down and stay down, is what God means, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, meaning that it, it, it nourishes the earth, it waters the grass and the plants and stuff, and it makes the grass and the plants grow. that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. He's talking about as his word, as the snow and, 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 and the rain comes down and, and it produces fruit in the earth realm to make provision for man. God said, verse 11, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. A lot of people didn't catch it when Jesus said, it is finished. He's the word of God. And in the Greek, uh, in, in the Greek, where you see in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and John 1 and 1, word there is from the Greek word logos, and that means the expression of God, the thought of God, the computation of God, meaning the bottom line is Jesus Christ. He's the word of God. That's how God can say that you created everything, Jesus, in, in Hebrews chapter 1, because Jesus is the word of God. And 1 John chapter 5, thank you, Lord. I got to be careful because I, I, I feel like praising him right now when the Lord is using you to minister his truth and he's the one doing the talking his presence will stir you up and that river of living water start bubbling in your belly and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water that's the anointing oh, you won't be able to contain yourself 1st John chapter 5 verse 7 in the King James Version, it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. The Holy Ghost, who is the author of the Bible, speaks what he has authored. And his word, so many people say it all the time, Lord, let your word be a lamp unto my feet. They read that scripture and they say it and they ask God to let the word be a lamp unto their feet and they say, help me to follow your word. But yet and still some people, I'm talking about in ministry as God give it to me, some people tend to add to the word of God with no fear. And when they do that, you know what that means? Two things. One, they don't fear God. And two, because they don't know him. We're, we're, we're living in a dangerous time. People have intruded. You know, you got, 
Oh, God. You got to understand something, brethren. The Word of God is just that, God's words. His words. And if you're going to follow Him, John chapter 14, verse 15, Jesus said, If ye love me, keep my commandments. But because of no training, because of the blind leading the blind. A lot of people have decided to go their own way or to go in a way that seems right unto them. Now I heard a prophetess and some other ministers talk about mindset, the mindset, the mindset. And the Bible said the mindset. No, it don't. Look that word up in the Bible. You will not find mindset. Oh, you, no, you won't find it. Because, see, the bottom line is you could think on spiritual things like Brother Paul was led to write to the brethren at Philippi in chapter 4. Think on these things. And the things that he mentioned were all things of great value. But you serve God. You worship him from your spirit. Well, Jesus told the woman at the well in John chapter 4, in verse 23, he said, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And that word right there, in spirit, does not mean the Holy Ghost, because the S is small. That word spirit there means from your spirit. Deep in the center of you. That's where you worship God from. Because that's where God talks to you at. When he fills you with himself. And he lives inside of you. And you are Holy Ghost filled. He talks to you there. And those of us, when he fills us with himself and gives us the gift of a holy language, he speaks through our spirit to himself so that we can agree with what he's saying in the earth realm. What he's saying in heaven that needs to be released in the earth realm. This is the reason why one of them that he had to come into the earth realm because he needed someone to agree with him. And there's only one person mm, who can agree with God. And that's God. Before I leave John chapter 4, again, verse 23 says, But the hour cometh. Jesus said, and now is when the true worshipers, a lot of people say they worship God, but they really don't. You can't worship God and live to please the enemy or even live to, live to please yourself. You can't. But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Those are the type of worshipers that God seeketh, that he looks for, that he expects, that he welcomes, that he communes with. Those that worship him in spirit and in truth. There's a lot of people who don't even know that God is not with them. They don't know. They're walking apart from God. And because they don't know his footsteps, because they don't know the sound of his feet, so to speak, they don't realize that they are walking all by themselves. This is why people miss blessings. 
This is why some people now, a whole year later, in 2020, haven't got what they were praying for in 2019 because they didn't seek God. Instead, they said, well, God promised me. What did you promise him? Saith the Lord. Some people said they were going to study more and don't. Some people said that they were going to start praying more and don't. Some people even said, I'm going to learn how to treat people right. And they don't. Some prophets and prophetesses have told God, I will write my dreams down and date them so that when it come to pass, that it'll be proof that you said it. And they still haven't done it. There's some people that said, I'm going to go to such and such a person and admit to them what I've done wrong to them so that that way we can straighten out a problem and instead of being divided, we can be united. Lord, if you make the opportunity, I'll do it. And he puts you in front of them and still you don't. John 4, verse 23, Jesus said, but the hour cometh, and now is. And now is. A lot of people blame the fact that they're not receiving stuff. Well, it's not God's timing. Yes, it is. If God revealed to you that he want to do something in your life, that means He. this is what he's working on. He want to do it now. Well, why hasn't he done it? Because you're not ready. There's some sisters that the Lord has put the man of God, a man of God, right in your path. And a man of God is used by God to notice you and tell you God said. Now, I understand and God understands that there are people who say God said and God didn't really say, but you could tell those people because they don't live what they preach. They don't. Just because they hold a big revival or a prophetic explosion or because they hold a revival or because they have a building and go to a place and wear a mask looking like a ninja, that don't mean that they are walking with God. That's not what that means. Because the scripture also talks about false prophets, false apostles, false teachers. And they do all of that. They have the building. They even have the sheep and the support. But if you go to their house and catch them unaware, you don't hardly see them sitting there in no word. The sisters say that they desire a man of God. The Lord blessed them with one. A man of God, he comes. Can we pray? He comes full of the word and will and will be willing to read with you and study with you and be concerned about your anointing. But some sisters don't want that. No. They want to be thrown around, flipped around, thrown on a chandelier and spun a few times. And then when they come down, they say, I follow God. You ain't see God on no chandelier. Jesus says, John 4, wait a minute, I hear you, Lord. And God said to say this, don't, brothers, you ain't getting away with it because there's a lot of men in the family of God and even in the pulpit that have said, Lord, please bless me with a wife. I promise I won't cheat on her too. 
I promise I won't lie to her either. I promise I won't hit her no more. Because there's some brothers out there that have temper problems and got problems with their hands that don't know that you don't hit a woman. Now we're talking generational curses and generational demons because some men feel like if I hit her, I saw my father do it, so I might as well do it. Some women say, I saw my mother get beat, so I'm, I, if, he, if he don't beat me, he don't love me. People are confused. Confused. Because they won't get in God's face and ask him, Father, teach me thy way. So God has allowed Satan. You remember some of y'all the book of Job? He allowed Satan in the book of Job to go rob from Job, to kill Job's children, to steal this and steal that, and attack Job's life, his health. And Job was a king. His name in the book of Genesis was actually Jobab. He was the second king of Edom, Scripture says. That's why he had all that stuff. That's why he had so much substance. He wasn't no poor man by no means. And if you read the dialogue, you'll find that even his friends said how prosperous and prestigious he was. And now, Job, you're going through this because you sinned, which they were wrong. A lot of people assume because you have stuff, that means you're blessed. And because you don't, that means you sinned, and that's wrong. That's error. Because the devil can give you stuff too. When you see the music uh, awards on television, and you see the rappers that curse, steal, shoot, rob, and everything else, and they stand there and say, I like to thank God, even Tyler Perry. Mm. When you, uh, uh, that's because God had to put his hand over my mouth right quick. Even Tyler Perry, dressing as a woman, playing with scripture, laughing, cussing, doing all of this. And y'all, some of y'all, allow him to walk up in y'all ministry. And because he's Tyler Perry, and he entertains you, you assume to to that that he's a great man no you can't play with god's word but him he even said in a so-called testimony when he was getting an award and they said you used to be homeless yeah but god has blessed me then he'll start saying two or three scriptures and then you have carnal people in the audience applauding How can you agree with a carnal person about the goodness of God when they don't know about the goodness of God? They don't know. They don't know. Jesus said, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, capital S. Now he's saying God is the Holy Ghost. And they that worship him must worship, and if you have a King James, him is italicized. So the correct way to read that part, they that worship him must worship him in spirit, small s again, meaning your spirit, and in truth. What do you mean, in truth? Well, in John chapter 17, notice I got to stay in the word. In verse 
in chapter 17 and verse 17, Jesus was praying. Uh, he was interceding for the apostles. And in verse 17, he said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So you can only worship God from your spirit and according to his word. If you go off the word at all, then you will not be worshiping God. You will be worshiping someone or something else. Because the word is what keep us in line. Look at Psalms 119 verse 89. None of this is written down in front of me, but it's written between the covers of the Bible. Psalms 119, verse 89. Scripture says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. He said it. He meant it. It stood then. And it stands now. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. For all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus, I have a satisfied life. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have food on my table. I'm glad, I'm glad I know someone. And it What did you say you had? Satisfied.